Welcome to In the Studio. We're here with Reverend John Pamperin, a community legend, a campus and community minister. We talked on an earlier segment about the early years. Now we're going to ask Reverend Pamperin about his later years. So, Reverend Pamperin. Yes, yes. Tell me, um, let's go some highlights, okay? You've you talked about growing up, you were an outstanding athlete, you held the state re record in the high jump in Wisconsin, and um, you were activist, you worked with Cesar Chavez. Bring us up to the early years, your work with, um, well, I met you for an example, let's go from here. When I met you and you worked with, uh, I, I, um, I was with NFL legend John, uh, Jim Brown, the running back, and you came over and you talked with me. So you were involved in 209, 187, against 209, against 207. Those were propositions in California. One was uh, targeting uh, Mexican-Americans like Trump, and the other one was targeting um, all minorities, people of color, affirmative action in 209. And we uh, focused on, um, it was dealing, going battle against Ward Carnley and then Pete Wilson, who was the governor. So tell us about what led you into activists you're coming to Davis, and um, some of the highlights, you know, even the uh, Matt Barnes story. Right. Well, uh, as I said, we were trained at seminary in those days to be activists without knowing it, <laughs> actually. And uh, once you go in a big civil rights march, uh, I tell the story about getting to uh, Montgomery, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, a boot black came up and said, I want to shine your shoes. And I said, well, about the last thing I need right now is a shoe shine. And he said, well, let me do it free. He hadn't looked at me in the eye. And he finished the shoe shine, and he said, the place you need to go is Ebenezer Baptist Church. The phone number you're to call is, and he gave the phone number, then he looked me in the eye and he said, I have waited a lifetime to be able to share that with somebody that was important in the civil rights movement. I, of course, teared up and thought, gee, this is very, very serious. And once you got used to that, uh, you couldn't pass up uh, 209, 187, even to today. Donald uh, Trump. D Donald Trump in the uh, football scene. And, yeah. um, uh, and what you learn, I think, is how deep civil rights are for all groups. I was active uh, doing gay counseling when I was first here. And then uh, we did some work with the Asian scene. Uh, we did some work with the... Uh, uh, other groups of minority that were at Davis. And uh, then you get, begin to have successes with, some, with somebody in your program. Francesco Rodriguez, who was with our uh, community program with the police, he became the, he's currently the uh, head of the junior college system for the state of California. Mm -hmm. And he faced in our little police work some of the prejudices that, are, that were common at that time. And then uh, I, I need to just mention, I didn't the other night, but I need to mention that part of the civil rights work at that time was the anti-war work, meaning the war with Vietnam. Right. And I had an uh, officer that was giving me my test for, uh, to get into seminary, explaining what was wrong with that program in Vietnam and that we, wouldn't, we didn't possibly have a chance of winning, as to quote him. Of course, I heard and that. He knew that way back then. That was yes. even before the war started. Yes. And so some of that is not necessarily anti-military, although... You know, we have 800 bases around the country, <laughs> around the world. So we need to cut back, continually need to cut we back. We had four, four um, people in the military that just got killed, rangers, in, right. in Niger. Yeah. What are we doing in Niger? 
I mean. Well, that's your field. That's your <laughs> field. <laughs> okay, yeah. go back to you. But um, I guess to sum this up is it gives you a perspective of uh, how other people live for the first time. I grew up in an all-white town. Uh, the Kennedys came to La Crosse to test whether or not a Catholic could be elected president. And uh, my dad wouldn't let my mom go to Mrs. Kennedy's tea in, in La Crosse. So, Continually, you, you see the, the uh, struggle both with religion and race and uh, uh, how important uh, trying to, to eradicate a racism or sexism than you find out. Uh, I always thought there would be gay marriage, and now there is gay marriage. Uh, so there's been some real steps forward in almost every field. And as I said Saturday night, but both Caesar and Martin, Martin Luther King, reading what they wrote during their lifetime is a good start to understanding the struggles for all races and all Could peoples. You? Did you predict, or, or did you, could you predict the rise of Donald Trump, him actually getting elected president of the United States in 2016? I mean, is that, is that something you saw coming in any way, shape, or form? I didn't see that coming in 2015 <laughs> <laughs> or the day before the election. I, I, and in fact, I'm prejudiced on that. I think it was the connection with the Russians. That really got him elected. But I couldn't understand people seeing how he could help them in their lives. I just couldn't. Well, his play on blatant racism, the playing the race card in this day and age, after President Barack Obama served two terms, right. we go from Obama to Trump. We go from the very top, in my opinion, to the very bottom. Um, explain that and explain also why you think he picks these issues that focus on race, for an example, the saluting the flag, kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance, and these athletes are protesting the brutality that African Americans face, many killed by the police. We had a right. student, I mean, we had a teacher at Woodland High recently, Wendy Pappas, who was at an assembly and knelt and had a sign and saying, you don't have to agree with, 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 with anything that, that we're doing or any sign that we have here, right. and, and put up Black Lives Matter, and they, they escorted her off campus. Now, she's back at school now. That was on a Friday. I believe she returned to school on Tuesday. But, but the, the kind of climate that, that uh, Trump has created, and his, his base is racist. He, the KKK, the Nazis, the white supremacists, he couldn't say that these people are, are wrong. He refused to say he, he, he made the equivalent, them equivalent to the people that protest against them. What's going on in the, in the, in the world right now, particularly in America? Well... Uh us ministers studied theology uh, pretty deeply at seminary, and then we try uh, to apply it in the di different communities. And the fact that human beings are, are uh, pretty alienated in their values, that happens in history, certain s sections of it more important than others, but we killed 70 million people in four years in the Second World War. World War II, the greatest killed, generation. Yes, and we killed over 10 million in the First World War. Wow. And we were at war with our so-called capitalist allies. And we depended on Russia, really, to pull us out there in, uh, with the German situation. Well, so uh, part of the... Theology, I was just at a meeting talking about uh, uh, what are the first five years of education, meaning... Okay. Uh, right, right. But I want to... Before you tell that story, I want to yeah. get back to the story. Um, when Matt Barnes, the NBA player, he just won the NBA championship with the Golden State Warriors. Right. 
He was at uh, Del Campo High School, and he had death threats. They had die, Matt Barnes, die. What would make you uh, go with me to Del Campo High School to work with Matt Barnes and to get him back in school? Because the news newspaper reporter said he was in school when he wasn't. Yes. Well, once you've been active in civil rights, pretty hard not to be active. <laughs> and in the case of Matt, uh, I knew about the sports writer. He was not a good sports writer. And uh, I just thought you and I and uh, the third friend yeah, ought to go the, over to the, the family. The Washington governor, he's in South Africa now. Really? Yeah, yeah he's in Durban. So uh, we went there, and I remember asking Matt, I said, uh, have you been back in school? Because I didn't think he had. Been. Right, we went to his house first. And yeah. uh, I had studied graffiti and uh, hate graffiti. And all of the stuff that was at that restaurant, the school restaurant, qualified yeah. as serious graffiti. Yeah, they wrote all over the school. They said right. they were going to kill him, basically, and threatening then, his life. And uh, so then we went over to the principal, and the principal, uh, I said, you know, you have money in your city budget. You could provide uh, him protection. And they said he's not the president of the United States. Yes, and they said he's not the president of the United States. <laughs> what did I say? And you said you're going to think he was the president if something happens to him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we had, uh, by then, uh, cities had, in fact, the guy got elected to the Elk Grove City Council. Yeah, uh, I know who you're talking too. about. I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah. But yeah he was there. He was an Af African-American right. um, policeman. And he's the one that said what? Matt was not uh, uh, not the president of the United not States. Not the president of the United yeah, States, yeah. and that's what my reply would be. Right. So, uh, and then, you know, people, I mean, we all forget and act out our racism to some extent. What's going to happen to Trump? What do you think is going to happen? Predict the future. Go and go. Let's say a year. Is he going to last even a year? But I, I can't year. picture him. Well, he might last a year. I think he'll be impeached. I think he'll be impeached. Yeah. 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 I think the Republicans will find him. There are quite a few turning on him now. And he... Uh, uh, now his latest statements about Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico and part well, of the United States. He didn't care about Puerto Rico. <laughs> we only have two minutes left. And he, okay. he, he clearly doesn't care about Puerto Rico. Yes. He, he made very insulting statements about Puerto Rico. It was messed up before the storm. Right. He didn't say that about Florida. He didn't say that about Houston. Right. Um, but this racism, I, you know, Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany, and I always grew up saying, how in the world could they let this guy get into power? And here Trump comes in after Barack Obama. What does that say about the human condition? That he's president. Donald Trump, uh, a blatant racist, said that, 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 that Obama was not even born in the United States is president of the United States right now as we sit here. What does that say about the human condition? Well, it means that we should send the president Victor Frankl's book from Death Cab to... Man's Ex Search for Meaning. Yeah, Death Cab to Existentialism, Man's Search for Meaning. And uh, the study of the death camps, I know when I was uh, active in the CO counseling, uh, one boy from uh, Palo Alto, he was uh, 18-year-old. Just on time. We're going to have to wrap this yeah. up pretty quick. Anyway, so. he, he became a CEO, and his father came to my office and said, John, thank you, because we did not want any of our children fighting in a war. Right. And right. They, he and the wife and the boy's and mother then, had met in, in Well, and Auschwitz. Trump, Trump made the statement in a meeting that he wants 10 times more nuclear weapons. So, you know, something is crazy. That's where um, Tillerson said, called him a, you know, a moron right. with a cuss word, effing moron. Right. Right. But anyway, thank you for being here, Reverend John well, Thank Tamper, you for your support. A great, great legend, a living yeah. legend in our community. Good friendship. Thank you for being my friend and for your contribution yes. to our community and to the world in general. And thank you all for being in the studio with us once again. Yes. Take care. Thank God you. bless. Have a great day and enjoy life.